see that God is good. We look at our lives, right? Everyone here has something to be thankful to God for, right? Andrew and Taylor, you guys are about to get married. Praise God. Amen. Perhaps a button. Did you pop the question yet? <laughs> not in church. Okay. So, right. <laughs> well, well, you will. Praise God. Amen. Talia, you have a great job. Praise God. We're here today, praise God. We all have something that we could be thankful for. How is it that we respond to God? Is our response saying, well, I go to Bible study, I go to church, I'm giving back to God. And if that is the some of what we are giving to God, we're saying, God, you are not worth more. Mm. You're not worth my time. You're not worth my praise. You're not worth my worship. Because we all say God is good. But if God is good, why aren't we giving him, like they said, like Peter said, 100%? Mm -hmm. Why are we okay with giving him 50%? We would not be okay in a relationship with our partner giving us 50%. But yet, we are giving God, some of us aren't even giving him 10%. We're not giving him 10%. And for some reason, we're saying, I'm responding accordingly. I'm responding that God is good. I'm responding, I'm doing all, everything I should be doing. But really what we're doing is giving him what's convenient for us to give. The heart of worship. A heart of worship recognizing not only is God good, but I'm going to respond by giving him my all. By, by Yes, going to church is part of that. But after church is over, my attitude is going to be part of my worship. My speech is going to be part of my worship. Gossip is not worship. Anger is not worship. A nasty attitude is not worship. Not reading your Bible is not worship. We need, we need to realize that worship is saying, God, you are good for all of me. Because you gave me all of you. So you get all of me. What is worship? Now, today's uh, sermon doesn't necessarily have to do with worship, but it has to do with a response and a listening and what you're going to do when you hear something, right? Because we always hear, you know, whether it's me or we hear a great preacher on YouTube or when we hear a good word, we, we hear something we're like, yeah, amen, man, that's dope. But guess what? Monday comes around, that sermon ain't doing nothing. You want to know why? Because you've only given God that one hour of your time. Because when you stay connected to God, there's certain things that may happen in your life that you just respond to him. When that means that someone cuts you off, you just got cut off and that's it. Because I'm going to tell you, sometimes I've been getting cut off and I'm just like, help me Jesus. But like, if, when I'm connected to God, that happens and I'm okay. It means that that job that I don't like, I'm okay. It means that that family member who grinds my gears, I'm okay. I can't give God 2% of my time and think I'm going to be okay. Like he's supposed to completely take over my mind, control my thoughts, control my actions, and then somehow think, man, when, when this doesn't happen, when, when me, be, me being not okay, when I'm not okay, it's not his fault. It is my fault. Because I didn't hear him and I didn't respond to him. Now, the focus text for today is found in Matthew 4, verse 19. It says, Jesus called out to them, come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. The title of today's sermon is Call Waiting. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much that you never stop calling us. Mm -hmm. Now as we hear something from your word, open our hearts and open our minds. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. 
I hate talking on the phone. I despise it. I don't like it. I don't like when people call me. Like, I know phones are made for phone calls. I don't like when people call me. Most of the time, unless you are my wife, you're probably going straight to voicemail. Or I'm going to let it ring, because you know, when you hit the, 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 the voicemail button, you go straight to voicemail, they know what you did. So I let it ring. I don't like doing it. Even worse, when I'm on the phone, already doing something I don't like, then someone calls me on top of that, it like something inside me is like, why didn't they just text me? So much more convenient. Straight to the point, and I don't gotta talk to you. Or, you know, when you, when you, when you text somebody and then they call you back? <laughs> like, if I wanted to call you, I would have called you. <laughs> but the, 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 ultimate, the ultimate thing about that is, though, is that I just don't like listening to people. I, I, don't, I don't like listening to people because, you know, a conversation on the phone gets awkward, right? A conversation on the phone gets awkward. You say what you got to say, th then what? Like, like, there's this weird moment where you're like, well, okay. Like, like it's hard, for me, it's hard to end that conversation. So I don't know, like, after, after the subject at hand is done, it's like, well, all right, um, I don't, like, I don't know what to say, like, do I, I got to go? I really don't. I really, but it, it's, it's weird. Just say bye. I, I don't want to hurt no one's feelings. <laughs> It'll be fine. But, like, there's this thing, though, that although I'm not a great communicator, I don't like communicating, my wife loves communicating. <laughs> And don't get me wrong, no, I actually want to communicate with her, but sometimes I don't know how to respond. She'll say something, and it's meaningful, and I received it. And I'll stay quiet. I, I received it. And she, and she wants to communicate, and here I am, not responding to the communication. And if I do, it'll be like, yeah. And I know that's not enough, but I just, I, I, I didn't learn how. But that response is wrong. The no response is wrong, and the short response is wrong. You see, we, we have a God who's consistently trying to communicate with us, and our response, most of the time, is wrong. No. You, 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 you know that at... God is saying, Daniel, I have something for you. And I say, thank you for what you have for me, but I don't respond. Think about it this way. God woke each and every one of you up today. Amen. What is your response? Thank you. But words don't matter. I can say thank you all day long. If my actions don't show that I'm thankful, am I? thankful. What it really shows when I'm just saying words, it means it's convenient. It means that almost like, yeah, I deserve to be woken up. But my actions dictate something different. You see, since I've realized I'm such a bad communicator with my wife, I have tried to learn how to communicate. I've gone to see a counselor about my communication. Don't get me wrong, I ain't good at it still. But it's something that I want to respond to the love she has for me for wanting to talk to me. So a proper response is, I need to learn how to do this. Because if I don't do this, I am not getting what I need and she's not getting what she needs, what she deserves. So when God speaks to me, I can't just be like, yeah, my life has to show something. See, the Holy Spirit is consistently trying to reach out to us to try to get us to move in a certain direction, but we don't respond, right? Because what I want is a lot of times more convenient and what I think is better than what the Holy Spirit wants. See, in Matthew chapter 4, we're going to talk about what I just read in our focus text, but we have to go back 
to Matthew chapter 3, and I'm not going to read it, but I'm just going to go over it real quick. In Matthew chapter 3, Jesus is baptized. Amen. He is baptized. The Holy Spirit comes up. We, we, read, we heard the stories. The Holy Spirit comes like a dove. This is my son, and who I am well pleased. Then the Holy Spirit talks to Jesus, and he does something that doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Because he just had this spiritual high. He just had this great encounter with God. He, 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 his father is saying, you are my son, I am well pleased with you. Jesus is remembering eternity with his father. He's feeling good right now. And then something strange happens. Matthew chapter 4 verse 1 says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. The Holy Spirit called him to a dead place to be tempted. Jesus went for 40 days. He responded to what the Holy Spirit prompted him to do. You see, the Holy Spirit will tell us sometimes to do some things that don't make a lot of sense. He will tell us to go to places where we are going to get bombarded with negativity. We're going to get bombarded with put-downs. We're going to get put into a place where I'm not comfortable and it's literally a dead place, but we, what we have to remember is that we need to respond to the Holy Spirit. We can't rely on the feeling of our baptism. We can't rely on the feeling of a spiritual high because when I rely on this, I will go to this dead place and I will starve and I will die. And you see, what the, Holy, what, what the devil does when he's there is tempt Jesus with the things he knew he could hurt Jesus with. See, Jesus is in the wilderness for 40 days. He got no food. The first temptation is, you see the stones there, turn them to bread. And I, you know, there's a part of Jesus who might have been like, yeah, I can do that. Maybe I didn't think about that before. I am hungry. But he lets the devil know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And I want to talk about that for a second because... When we are going through a spiritual famine, we are not eating from his word. There is no reason for me to go to a spiritual darkness when I have the word of God right here. If, this is the, if, if the word is the truth and, it's the light, and, it's, and Jesus is the word manifested from, this, from the scripture and, and he's the light of man, and he's the, the bread of life and all these things, I can't say I'm going through a spiritual famine when I have the source of life right here. Bread. Jesus is saying, bread. Eat. I don't need the real food. I can be in a place of hunger and starvation. I have what I need. Is this what we need? Mm. Or do I need validation from people? Mm. Do I need validation from a job? No. Do I need validation from uh, uh, things and objects and, and little idols that may not be God, but they're, they're small idols that could distract me? Mm. Is that what I need to be fulfilled? Mm. Or is this enough? Is God enough? When God calls you, is he enough for you to respond and follow in kind? Because God calls us to, to some wildernesses, and we don't like it. It says that the devil took Jesus, took him to the holy city of Jerusalem, to the highest place in the temple. He says, if you are the son of God, jump off and let the, the, the angels catch you. You see, he, he's tempted Jesus like he's not who he is. And Jesus says, uh, uh, the scripture says, you must not test the Lord your God. You see, the devil's trying to knock Jesus in the place that, are you the son of God? Are you God? Are you important? Throw yourselves if you throw yourself off if you really are. And a lot of times we forget uh, uh, when the devil tries to tempt you that you are not enough, that you are not good enough, that you are not really a child of God. Because if you were a child of God, you wouldn't do the things you do. You wouldn't say the things you say. If you are really this child, prove it. And then we try to prove it and we test it up. We look at our life and we test it. We see we fall short and we kind of forget who we are. So the next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. I said, I will give you everything, he said, if you kneel down and worship me. Jesus says, get out of here, Satan. The scripture says you must worship the Lord and your Lord your God and serve him only. Who are we serving? Who is our God? Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you're giving God your 5%, he is not your God. 
That's the reality of it. He is not your God if you are giving him 5%. Because I guarantee you give the TV more than 5%. Mm -hmm. So that means the TV is a higher place of God than God himself is. It means we are not responding to the call that God has on our life. What's it say in the first commandment, y'all? I am. I am the Lord your God. He is our God. Talks about not worshiping anything else. He is God. Now, introspectively, think, is God my God? And when he has called me to do something, am I responding? You see, Jesus has his spiritual high, his validation from the Father. And then God tells him, go to the wilderness, and Jesus listens. And the reason he goes there and God lets him go there is because this was to set Jesus up and prepare him for the ministry to come. You see, when God sends you to a wilderness, it's to set you up for something to come. He is not going to give you what's yours until you are prepared for it. So if you, are keep, if you keep wondering, why haven't I gotten the things that God has promised me? You're not ready. Mm -hmm. But he wants you to be ready. And part of being ready is, am I picking up the phone when he calls? Or am I letting that call wait and just ring, ring, ring? Because you don't really want to commit to him. Because committing to him means you give up some things. Committing to him means that part of your identity of who you were gets put away. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us aren't okay with having some stuff of me be gone. Mm -hmm. we, identify, we, we rather identify with toxic natures mm -hmm. than the person who has the solution. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we never give up toxicity in our life. Mm. Is that the word? Mm. I think I've said that before and I wasn't sure. Okay, it's a yeah, word. It's, yeah. Yeah. Toxicity. Sounds weird. <laughs> but we, we, we don't want to give it up. And the thing is that we all have some toxic natures in us, so I'm not just trying to say, yo, Hepsi, well, you all have, you are toxic, bro. No, all of us have something, and sometimes we refuse to give that up. Yeah. We rather read self-help books than go into God. And don't get me wrong, going to a self-help book might have some answers. There's a lot of smart people who've gone through it, who've gone to school, and so they know. But we still have to give it to God. Part of the process of being transformed and renewing my mind and being created in Him is not just learning the tools to get over the toxic stuff, but also giving it to Him so that He lets it go. Right? Because if I'm supposed to be transformed, I have to let it go. And we have a lot of things to let Go. Call waiting. Are you listening to the call that God has, has given you? Or is it just ringing and ringing? And the thing about God is that he keeps calling. <laughs> See, certain people will just stop calling you after a while. And there's God who never stops. This is some, some of you guys know the story of me and Natasha. Some of y'all know. I'm not getting the story. <laughs> But let's just say, well, not let's just say, this really happened. She said no to me a lot in front of people, alone. It didn't matter. She kept saying no. And I kept telling her yes. I told her we're going to get married. I told her we're going to have a little boy. I said this is going to happen. And she said, one day, y'all, for the people, she shouted at me and was like, no, I'm not going to be with you. I will never be with you. That's right, internet audience. My wife said that to me. Look who's laughing now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. But I kept being consistent and persistent. You see, God doesn't just give up when I say no. He doesn't give up when my actions say no. The fact of the matter is, God will be with you in that place you're not supposed to be, as well as God will be with you at church, 
Why? Because the Bible says that he will never leave us nor forsake us, which means God is always waiting for you to listen and pick up the phone. Are we going to let it ring? Or are we going to pick up? Now, now to Jesus called his first disciples. One day, verse 18 in Matthew chapter 4, one day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. Here it is, y'all, verse 20. And they left their nets at once and followed him. Amen. They literally left their whole identity, what they did for a living, to follow a vagabond. Someone who had no home, no income, no way to say, I'm going to pay you for a living. No, they said, I will fall. They said, I'm going to leave everything behind. Their boat, oh, they're fishermen. They did this for a living. That means their boat, they identified with this. This is how they fed themselves. This is how they made money to make sure they had a house. This is what they had. Then they left their nets. They left the tools of that life behind and followed at once. Are we willing to leave behind the old tools, our old way of life, our identity, to pick up the phone when he calls and at once follow Jesus? Because following Jesus, once again, I said this at the very beginning, following Jesus is a lot more than 10%. Following Jesus means I'm literally identifying with him. Because remember, they, he was their rabbi. They were, his, he was, they were his disciples. They followed him wherever he went. If he went to Rome, he, they were going to Rome. If, he, if they he went to Capernaum, they were going to Capernaum. Where he went, they followed. When he spoke, they listened. And when he ate, they ate. Are we willing to do this? Because a lot of us are leaving him on call way. Mm. If we're texting, a lot of us are leaving him on red. Mm. No. We, we, we hear the word. We sing the songs. But we're leaving him on red. There's no response. And I'm saying this because oftentimes our lives will look exactly the same as it did before. Mm -hmm. And if it looks the same, I'm not responding. I'm just listening. Mm -hmm. I'm just leaving him on red. And that's not who Jesus, who Jesus is calling. He's calling for people to be faithful because the Bible also says there are many who cried out, Lord, Lord. And he will say, I did not know you. So I can't go to church and think I'm saved. I can't go to church and think that I'm doing his will because he, church is great. Church is fellowship. Church is friends. Church is family. This is great. But a relationship with Christ is personal. I cannot cultivate a relationship with Christ for you. If you're not taking this home and, in, and going home and reading your Bible and praying, I'm sorry to tell you, you might be part of Lord, Lord. Because he said, I did not know you. He didn't say, I... I you, you knew of me. He said, I did not know you. There's an intimacy of knowing somebody. Listen, I guarantee you, I know how to make my wife mad. I don't always mean to, but I know how to do it. Because I know her. Right? If we don't know Christ, are we just crying out, Lord, Lord? What's your intimacy with him? Are you intimate? Because that's what he wants. The whole point of the cross is to be intimate again. The whole point of the cross was a broken relationship that he needed to reconcile. The whole point of the cross is to tear the separation between me and him. And it's gone. There's no separation. The only thing separating it is me. Am I crying out, Lord, Lord? Or am I picking up his call? Is there a response? Because, listen, I went to church my whole life. I went to church my whole life. I was a pastor's kid. I was a grand pastor's kid. 
I am third generation pastor. But I didn't know Jesus until after 30 years old. So it doesn't matter. Yes, I was baptized. Yes, I, I went to church and I sang the songs. I knew the, the memory verses that we had all the time. But I didn't know him. And there's nothing better than knowing him. I don't know if y'all ever read your Bible and you just felt that he's talking straight to you. And then you just can't do nothing but pray. And then you're like, oh my gosh. And then you, you, you think about that event for a long time. Why? Because there's nothing better than having an encounter with God. Let me tell you my closest encounter with God. Cr craziest thing ever. I told you, Andrew, before. I, uh, I preached at a, they call it a prayer conference, a week-long event for high schoolers. And um, the last, second to last day, I don't know why, but I told these high schoolers, I'm going to pray with whoever wants prayer. The band started singing their songs. I went to the right, and I kid you not, every student there got up, lined up to pray. And I'm like, oh, this is going to take forever. I'm not going to lie, this is the first song I thought. This is going to take forever, but we're going to do it. I close my eyes. I start praying. And I kid you not. I opened them, and there was no more people. I apparently prayed for more than 100 kids back to back to back to back. I felt like I closed my eyes for 30 seconds. Wow. I don't remember 90% of the prayers that I prayed. There was a little girl who had a mom with cancer, and she said, how did you know that you, to pray for my mom? I, I don't even remember praying for her mom, yo. Mm. I don't. But when you have an encounter like that, yes, they got prayed for, but it's me who felt humbled and decided, needed to respond to God. It was me who needed to say, oh my goodness, Lord, I, I need to like, like, I can't just let this go. Because when you have a real encounter with God, you can't just be the same. You can't just do everything that you were doing before. No, 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 no. You need to pick up the phone and respond. You know, worship, we said at the very beginning, worship is a response to God. If God is so good in your life, how are we responding? Am I picking up the call that he's giving, he's calling on me? Because he's calling on me 24-7. He's not calling on me on Saturdays only. He's not calling on me a Bible study, men's group, women's group. He's not, that's not the only time he calls. He calls when you wake up. He calls before you go to sleep. He calls you all the time because that's how much he loves you. That's how much he wants to be with you. We need to be like the disciples, to leave everything at once. Not like, oh, I'll get there eventually. Mm. We can't do that. Mm. We can't do that because that, that's part of the problem of giving only a little bit to God. That's part of the problem. And that is a problem when I decide that it is okay to give only a little bit to God. It is a serious problem because when I'm doing this, I, I, I can very well be part of the group that says, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did I not go to church all the time? Did I not go to Bible study very faithfully? Did I not pray before I eat? And thank you because I woke up. No, no, I did not know you. The proper response when God calls you, is to at once leave the identity of you behind and walk towards him in the newness of life. Because we, if we are saved, we are called to be different. We are called to walk with him. I'm not called to stay seated. Get up at once. Leave everything behind and follow him. Let's pray. Father, heaven, Lord, we thank you so much that you are a God who continues to call us day and night. And even if we don't pick up, even if we leave you on red, even if we pick up and then we hang up, God, you are a God who never stops because that's how much you love us. You don't want to see us go the wrong way. You don't want to see us hurt. You want to be with us. You want to hug us. You want to be so intimate with us that we know you and we know that you are the greatest thing ever and anything that we can experience, God. We thank you for you. 
We thank you for your consistency. We thank you for your faithfulness, God. Help us to respond and not leave you and call away you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.